John, hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, yeah, very well. First of all, welcome to Moldova and welcome to our program. Thank you. How are you enjoying Moldova so far? Yeah, it's, um, it's uh, very interesting for me. It's the first time here in Moldova. Um, I've, I've done some work in Romania before, so it's not such a big culture shock for me with the language and everything. Yeah, it's good. People have been very welcoming, very hospitable so far. What are you doing in Moldova? What is your business purpose? I've um, been invited to come to Moldova by the USAID organization and through um, their local on the ground company called um, Chemonix. And um, they've come over to have a look at the Moldovan wine industry, to investigate and to have a look at the potential for working within the Chinese market for Moldovan producers. I read that you started as a, an assistant for a winemaker. That's right. And now you're a winemaker yourself yes. and you get to decide certain things and help other companies when it comes to their wine and yeah. how to produce it and how to market it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, now so that's a, a long road to, to go. How, how did that go? For it's you? a slow progression but I um, grew up in a wine region in the mm -hmm. Barossa Valley in Australia which is one of our uh, bigger wine regions. I didn't know what to do when I finished school. I got a job in a winery um, and really enjoyed it. Decided to study. Um, I, I then started working as an assistant winemaker, like you said. Then obviously to a winemaker and then decided to throw it all in and become a flying winemaker and went to France for the first time and then it just, it just progressed. And it was at a time when uh, the whole wine industry was doing very well. There was certainly a lot more experimentation um, and the, the sharing of knowledge within the wine industry is a very positive aspect. Uh, it still is today. Mm -hmm. um, and hence I'm here talking about the Chinese market to Moldovans. I mean, it, it's still the ongoing sharing of knowledge is a common so ground. So it's not everyone to themselves and keeping the secret No, I think, I think for anyone to be progressive, especially as a, at a country level, um, mm -hmm. they have to, to work united and to be united you have to know people's strengths and weaknesses and, and help them as such. How is it in Moldova? Did you get to discover that for yourself? Yeah, I've, I've, been, I've only been to four wineries so far, so I'm still still investigating and hence why I'm here for another week. And what I have seen so far, it, it's been very, very interesting because the, the there's a nice cross-section of wines, the, you know, the sparkling producers, white and red wines and um, the fortified wines and the brandies um, are, have, have, been, have really surprised me. Uh, they're excellent. When you come here, do you get to taste it? Do you have to taste it? Oh, you have to. Yeah, absolutely, you uh -huh. have to. There's no point. So looking. you can't make a conclusion or help them out unless you know the taste of everything. Yeah, well, in fact, quite often, once you, you can taste without um, and recognize things without actually having seen the, bottle. the vineyard or the or the winery or, or what they're doing in the winery, you can you can get an idea sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes with good and bad practices, they generally show in the bot in the bottle and in, in the glass. Mm -hmm. So as the as what people see in the glass is the final decision for if people like the wine or they don't like the wine, it's very, very important. So the technique, how they make the wine, basically in the end tells you everything they've done oh, right or wrong. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. And you can see it um, very easily. I mean, you can see, I mean, Moldova is very much in a state of change. There's mm -hmm. no doubt about that. And 10 years ago, the industry was very different to where it is today. And in many ways, it still now has to find its feet mm -hmm. to start again, to work towards other markets and to um, become as successful as it, as it, as it was. I think uh, it needs quite a, a bit of time since in 2006, I'm sure you know, sure, when yeah. we had the, with the Russian market, yeah. so about 80% of what we had just... But again, <laughs> that, that comes down to the reliance of, of just relying on one market. Mm -hmm. and, and when it goes wrong, it goes horribly wrong. Mm -hmm. And if at least you're spread out over um, various markets and one market doesn't go so well, then the others aren't going to be affected as, as, as badly. So basically this is one of the targets for, of your visit. Exactly, yeah. It, it's, I mean, to, it, it's to highlight China as a, an alternative, as a new market for Moldova and to um, highlight the do's and don'ts of trying to enter into the Chinese market, which is very complex. Now do you think they will like Moldavian wine? Since they like Moldavian music, will they like uh, Moldavian wine? I think there's as long, uh, yes, yes is the short answer. Mm -hmm. the, 
The longer answer is that Moldova as an industry has to do a lot of education to get people to try the wines. They're not going to try Moldovan wine without education and without working first because the choice is, is huge now for consumers in, these, in any market. What would be a good way for Moldova to start this campaign when it comes to China? Now what would be three good pointers for, for Moldova? What to take in consideration? The three most important things is take your best. Your, your quality, your wine, your people, the culture, the history and, and um, use that to educate the people. The education is um, without doubt the single most important thing that you need to do. The Chinese people love information. You go with quality, you go with education and you go with patience. Mm -hmm. And patience is, is the virtue that you will need probably the most in, in China, it's patience and persistence. When it comes to export for Moldova to other countries, after what happened with Russia, what do you think that our country, our companies should do to get above that? I think first the, the marketing with the labels is very important. You're entering new markets so you need to remove that Russian, I mean there's a lot of Moldovan wines that have Russian labels, mm -hmm. Russian acrylic Mm -hmm. letters and things like that, you need to remove that. The English is a very, very strong tool within China. So it's it's a language that everybody is learning. It's wanting an international. To learn it. it's, an, it's an international language, mm -hmm. so the, the labelling has to reflect. You have to put Chinese on your, on your labels, that's mandatory, mm -hmm. but you can also have English on there to give that Western, more affluent um, style that the Chinese people are looking for. So by taking a, an English orientated label mm -hmm. uh, there is, is going to be strong but a lot of the wine that is given in China is as gifts. Mm -hmm. People people don't actually buy it, they're given a lot of wines. It's at two periods of the year, at the Chinese New Year mm -hmm. in January, February whenever it falls and actually next week when it's their mid-autumn festival mm -hmm. are the two main periods of the of the year where 60% of all wine sold in China is given as gifts during this time uh, and consumed because it's a big family reunion time and um, very very important for the Chinese so you have to understand that if you want to sell wine in China you need to get your wine there before just before those events so that you can have your distribution. If you if you miss Chinese New Year, well then you have to wait eight months for the next big festival. So it's also it's about right timing. And it's under, exactly understanding that the market buys at that mm -hmm. sort of time. So basically you come here and you tell our companies that you give them the right pointer since you know that market so that if they do it, they do it correctly. That's right. That's the idea and then of course the people have to want to do it. Um, I'm sure they do since they want oh, to. Every, everybody, no, well, everybody says they want to. Mm -hmm. Not everybody does what they say. Uh -huh. and, that, that, and that's the same the world over. Everybody, of course, everybody wants to sell, you know, thousands of cases of wine of the very, very best quality every year for a hundred dollars a bottle. I mean, everybody wants to do Without that without doing much. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and and spend half the half the year going fishing as well. But you know, it, that's not the reality. That's not the reality. So the reality is, it's a lot of work, especially now. I mean, the the world is a different place now for not only wine but for everything. We are speaking about the label and its importance. Uh, what would you say should be on the label so it would be appealing when let's say a customer comes in the store? The first thing is the variety that they will see because um, Moldova is is easy enough to say in English but specific towns and villages are, are much more difficult for English speakers let alone Chinese mm -hmm. speakers. So by utilising the, uh, the variety is a very, very strong thing. The vintage is also very important and the older vintages are very much sought after by Chinese consumers. So, you know, it, it's not necessarily the best thing to rush your wine onto the market. But here in Moldova, there, I've seen quite a few wine producers have got older stocks mm -hmm. and volumes of older stocks of wine and they're perfect to at least take to the market to sort of present and that can, show, can show consumers. Speaking of the label as in colors or name or how, sh is there a... Yeah, a you've, got to, you've got to be careful because just 
just because the Chinese like gold and red and the number eight doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily mean you splash that on That's your label. That's all you have to do, yeah, just red, it, golden eight. Yeah, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't quite work like that. You can't try and be Chinese if you're not. So utilise the strengths of what you've got. And here it, it's more European, obviously. Mm -hmm. So utilise um, that European element, which is seen as prestige and premium and heritage and uh, portray the, the history of Moldova. We're going from the label back to the, the beginning. When it comes to making the wine, what is the biggest mistake that winemakers make? The biggest mistake winemakers make is they want to be winemakers. They, and, and by that I mean they make a wine that they think they enjoy, mm -hmm. not necessarily what other people enjoy. So you can make uh, a wine that as a winemaker you love because it's got, all, it's got all the techniques and you know the whole history of it. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you give it to somebody, they, they won't like it. And so making wines that actually fit into a market at a premium level as well is a very, very difficult scenario. Sometimes it's easier to make one barrel of very good wine and a lot harder to make a hundred thousand cases of wine that's accepted by a lot of people. So to make it in most of the markets you have to find the perfect balance. You've got to find the balance and you've got to find what's working in the market um, and be a little bit better than that. Because if it's working in the market you have to be better to, to at least get the consumer's attention. Otherwise, they're, they're quite happy. Everybody's happy with their brands. I mean, um, that's why big brands work, because they're, they're safe and they're easy for people. So to get people to become more experimental, you, you need to offer them something that will encourage them to do that. My last question for okay. you is, very short one, what is the best thing about wine? It's the best thing about wine. Um, I was almost going to say the beer at the end of the day, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I mean, for me, wine is a lifestyle mm -hmm. and it's been able to um, bring together everything from around the world for me because wherever you go in the world, literally, there is a vineyard. I mean, apart from a few obvious examples, but you know, there's, there's vineyards and there's wine all around the world. So for me, it brings, brings together uh, a, a place and a sense of being, and it also brings together a lot of friendly environments because wine always tastes better when you're with friends always and if you're with friends in good company in a good environment and you're drinking wine it, it, it tastes really good that's the best thing it's that lifestyle quality but it just brings everything together quite nicely and I've been very lucky to be involved in wine